If you're watching this channel, perhaps you are an audiophile. If you are an audiophile, perhaps you love jazz. If you love jazz, perhaps you love jazz at the pawn shop. And if you love jazz at the pawn shop, I'm sure you are searching for the perfect copy, the perfect medium, the perfect edition. We have it. Go. Okay, guys, today I want to talk about a very special Italian label. Yes, Audionautis Recordings, the navigators of audio, the translation of ancient Greek. It's a hi-fi audiophile reissue label. Obviously, we're going to see more details up ahead. But one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video, because I did want to do this video several months ago, if not years ago, but I finally had the excuse to bring this information to you. What is that? As you have understood from the intro, an amazing, mind-blowing edition, real to real, the whole program of Jazz at the Pawn Shop. Oh, yes, baby. It's incredible because Audionautis and more specifically Fabio Camorani, the genius behind the label, managed to obtain the licensing of the session tapes, actually. Because as we all know, well, at least a few of, the, of you guys know, I'm sure that Jazz at the Pawn Shop was recording on Anagra 4S with the, with the small little tapes, one after the other, actually two, Nagras for that reason and then just put together and we have those four amazing tapes actually here is an image as you can see these are the original session tapes but there isn't a real master actually designed because a master tape is designed mainly for vinyl since we're talking about recording of the, of the past century of the 70s and things like that so Fabio was able to put his hands, not only actually for jazz at the, at the pawn shop, but also Cantante Domino, which is another incredible uh, recording of Proprius, and now all under the rights of Naxos. So he is also publishing that and several other reels to reels. Clearly, I'm going to put the link of his website here below in the video description where you can explore all the different editions. But we're going to, we're going to explore something t today besides jazz at the pawn shop so as i was saying he obtained these the true session tapes so he just did a copy one to one copy of the four tapes because now they're uh, everything has been combined in four main tapes of that magical night and in fact you're there's everything on that tape you're gonna find the noises the clinking um songs that are cut off that clearly didn't reach the album the normal lp album which uh just finish abruptly probably going on the another one or just lost because with, with the nagra it, it is that easy i had a nagra 4s actually uh, before starting the channel and i sold it also for this reason because the adapters cost more than the nagra itself it's crazy so if you're not uh, out and about it's just better to have a studer or other things like that in any case, now we're going to take a look in depth to the package, okay? And that's why I have nothing in my hands. I want to show you all the details, and then we'll jump back for other information. Let's go. Okay, guys, are you ready to see one of the most amazing, incredible, analog, reel-to-reel -reel editions ever produced? Here we are. Oh, yes two huge boxes of full analog glory all four tapes of the sessions of jazz at the pawn shop okay are all here whatever was on those tapes it's also here fantastic okay let's take a look at one clearly there are two tapes for each box so already starting here i mean this box amazing box is handmade a painstaking process 
done one by one. Already this declares the amazing quality put in this type of productions. Okay, audio analysis recordings. Here's the logo, reference tape series. Full analog reel-to-reel, -reel, two track, one quarter of an inch, 15 inch per second from original analog master tapes. Oh yes, how it's supposed to be. So we can remove this nice little elastic so we can open the box in the correct way. And here we go. Beautiful. Immediately we noticed the certificate. Mine is a demo, but obviously you're gonna have your own serial number because they wanna know who has what. And this is the certificate that will make you uh, long last the value of this edition forever, I would say. Let's read. With this numbered certificate, we declare and guarantee that we have used analog equipment only from the original master tapes to this product, taking the highest possible care. No digitalization of any kind contaminated this product. We also verified that the masters have the same analog coherence. Fantastic. Along with this, we have the technical sheet, which tells us a lot of stuff. Very nice. It's a tape tail out edition. Little Fabio Camorani is signing everything and you can go through all the different edition, all the different technical aspects. Very, very cool. I mean, real technical aspects like the, the Nagra 4, which was employed, the type of microphones, uh, equalization, uh, all the magnetic flux, the, the, the employed uh, machines, the Otari MTR-15. I mean, it's all here. Very, very nice. Congratulations also for this. Together, we also have this very nice booklet, which completes the edition, I would say, because there's a nice, very nice photographs with all uh, the information related to this edition. Very nice. We have amazing pictures of the original master tapes. Here they are. I think you can see them. So cool. Just normal BASF Studio Master 911. Well, normal. I mean, high quality. Absolutely. As you can see, they employed Dolby for the recording. And here we have the program and some other information here. The Otari. Very, very nice. Other notes of the LPs, different editions. Beautiful. This is also inside the original edition, the Swedish edition. Okay, let's start to take a look now at the subject of this container, the reels. Let's put everything nicely back. We have a little protection and here we have the one of the first reels. The other one, you just have to lift this side little thing and you have the other one below. But we don't we don't have to take a look at all of them. One is more than sufficient. Nice plastic container, nice and rigid, says tape one. Very, very nice. I love every little detail. And let's take a look at this. La -da. I put it back exactly as I found it. And here it is, tape one, beautiful. This is a laser engraving done one by one. Uh, you're gonna see a video now where you see the process. Uh, once again, even this aspect, it just tells you what is going on, the care that Fabio is putting in because it, let's say it, I mean, we have to be honest. This is practically Fabio doing the main things because he knows where to go, what to do, and he does it good, very well. See, everything is perfectly incision with it by laser, made in Italy, this edition, 2022. Mine is a demo, as I told you. Beautiful, it's freezing cold. Love it, with this color that goes with the, the yellowish theme we could say of jazz at the pawn shop okay i'll put it back how it was more or less 
Here we are. And that's it. Wow. One of the most beautiful additions I've ever seen, along with acoustic sounds, probably. Very simple. As you can see, the license is from Naxos, Sweden. I think you can see that. They have all these masters now because the original label was Proprius. Fantastic. Love it. Let's proceed. So clearly this top of the tops edition ain't cheap. It actually cost quite a bit. But as you can understand, this is a one to one copy of what is in the vaults at Naxos. OK, it's never going to happen again. Or at least this is the ultimate edition you can find unless you go and steal the darn tapes. So in Italy, in Europe, at least on the website, it's the prices in euro. It's one thousand seven hundred euro. The good news is that you can find it also. And not only this. Also, all the well, ma the main um, editions, the main records from Audionautis, including Jazz at the Pawn Shop, Reel to Reel, is present on the website of Acoustic Sounds. Yes. So I guess it found the, the, the proper house in the US. If you're interesting, I saw today I checked it's on pre-order because these have been released just a few months ago, actually. And they're still in the process of making them. So uh, if you want, it, um, at Acoustic Sounds, it costs just under $1,600, which I know, once again, big money. But it's an incredible edition. And as you're going to hear afterwards, although compressed and digitalized, etc., etc., the sound is truly astounding. Now, I have a little parameter with Jazz at the Pawn Shop. All my editions, I have all the possible editions, the original LP. Uh, all the CD versions, high resolution transfers, uh, and digital, everything. There's always a problem with that darn tambourine because I think they recorded it too hot. Okay, it was clipping. That's also present here. And, and well, well, clearly, because that's part of the uh, recording. You can't do anything about it. At least that, in my opinion, that's a flaw in the recording. But all the rest, compared to all the editions I have, Really, I mean, guys, it's just mind blowing how tape can give that sensation a realism. But that's another story. And clear, it's just the more faithful you can go. But it's not a bias. I mean, as soon as you pl push play, you just feel all the, the ambience, the, the, those little noises, the transients, the lips, the saliva, the, the plucking, the, the every little noise is correctly there and reproduced it's just something different if you don't experience it clearly with a good recorder i have a studer 8 uh, 810 as you're gonna see afterwards perfectly calibrated also calibrated for sm 900 so top of the tops and the experience is astonishing okay but i just want to make a little disclaimer here i'm not doing a promotional video for audio analysis I, i'm just really passionate about what Fabio Camorani is doing about the label about their editions because in fact they do a lot of great stuff and don't take my word for it because for example Michael Fremer or Positive Feedback have already made stellar reviews about their stuff for example La España because I have a few things from them clearly and the recordings the care as you've seen for the real to real is just amazing I mean, uh, not only the Sonics, all every single aspect of the edition is very high quality and very, very nicely presented. Uh, for example, I mean, uh, in, a, in a while we're going to go a little more in depth. I don't want to reveal what is the surprise, we could say. But for example, they have excellent, okay, excellent CD editions. This is a recent limited edition, Cantante Domino, as you see. High Q, high quality CD, made in Japan. Hello Bell. And also the digital editions, which you can find on the on the website of Audionautis, are amazing, are, are incredible. I just want to mention one thing that really put me in a mindset. I understood what is Fabio Camorani 
the head of Audionautis is doing for his label, is doing for these reissues because he wants to do the best for himself and also for us who purchase the lucky guys, the lucky dogs who are purchasing this stuff. He sends the master, the digital file, because they made a master to do this, because once again, even these are just uh, session tapes in the end, which do need a little bit of uh, treatment. The digitalization of the tapes, because once again, he also had the master tapes of Cantante Domino. He made a digitalization high res. He put it on a specific hard drive and he sent the hard drive to Japan. He's not sending the files with we transfer or by email or any other uh, file transfer protocol and software. No, because there is degradation. And that's why I would say streaming sucks. What well, apart from that, he is taking a lot of care, things you're not supposed to do, nobody's gonna know, to do the optimal record for CDs, but also for record records, vinyl records. So what else can I say? I mean, I, I really understand this looks like a promo, but I am enthusiast. People who know me knows that I am enthusiast. I can say, because I'm completely transparent always, that Fabio did a little discount on this terrible thing that costs so much. That's all. Okay, so now let's get to the little surprise. Let's go a little more in depth on the processing of these records, digital and uh, analog. Who, with whom? With Fabio Camorani. Yes, I did a interview with him. I asked him a few questions on his gear, on, how, on, on the processing and philosophy and things like that. Very interesting. My hair is different because we recorded it a few days ago. And I hope you enjoyed it. We'll get back afterwards to listen to the tape. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning, Fabio. Thank you for being here today with us. Fabio, as I told you, is the uh, head of Audionautis Recordings and also the founder of this uh, label, along with a manufacturer, high-end manufacturer, audiophile products. But we'll, we'll, we'll get more in-depth in, in that. Let's jump in directly with a, with a few questions we have within for him. So, Fabio, what is Audionautis? Uh, good morning, Guido. Uh, Audio Nautis was uh, starting uh, in 2000 as manufacturer of uh, high-end products, uh, mainly based on tube. And we, we used to produce something for a few years. And then we started Audio Nemesis. That is the cheaper brand, uh, mainly with solid state or hybrid products. To tell the truth, we sold uh, a lot of items, a lot of products for a few years, and this was completely unexpected. But I was forced for a lot of uh, uh, things and reasons uh, to stop the production. And in 2010, I decided to start the label. Uh, and this happened simply because, uh, as you see, I have some thousands of products of uh, vinyls around me. And we noted that uh, we noticed that a lot of them were not really done in the correct way, or let's say the potential was higher than the result that we got. And also this happened comparing several editions of the same titles, because for some titles I have five, 10, 15 different editions. And I was able to compare all of them so we decided, uh, me and my friends in this adventure, to, to start something and to try something. And since we have a very long list of uh, forgotten titles, let's say this way, uh, I decided to start with Marcel Cellier, uh, who recorded in, during the 70s a fantastic live organ and pan flute together with Zamfir in Australia. And I contacted him and I was very surprised to have his yes immediately. And I uh, just went to Swiss to get the, the original master tapes. And this is the story. We started that way. Wow. Uh, one step at a time. <laughs>
Very nice, very nice. Um, so you started in 20, 2010, right? Yes, 2010. Exactly. And the main objective of Audionaut is, is to do reissues, high quality reissues, as you were saying. Exactly. That's the vision. The vision is to uh, reissue the, in the best possible way, high level of master tapes, mainly analog, not only analog, because sometimes there are fantastic masters that are digital, depending on, you know, if they are coming from 70s or 90s. And uh, from 90s, there is nothing that is analog, most, mostly nothing. And uh, the vision is to get the best possible result from those masters. And this is a complicated matter, very complicated sometimes. Uh, but this is the vision of the, of the company. So uh, it's not, was not born to, to get a lot of money from this business, but to get the best result that are completely the, the opposite side, you know, it's upside down. If you want to, uh, to become rich, we need to, to cut all the, uh, all, all the work. So we get the masters and we do the, the vinyl, the CD, then the master tape. But in, in our idea, it, it was the, the challenge was to get the best. So, uh, the, the purpose is to have the best reissues ever done from those masters this is uh, since the beginning and we never changed the, this this way of working since then well congratulations that's that's why the reason why i decided to do this video in fact because not everybody has this approach of saying okay my main objective is not to make money at all costs of course something you have to live out of something but passion quality and I think in Italy, there, there's very few, maybe you're the only one. I don't, I, I'm not sure about this because we know there are audio, other audiophile labels in the United States, of course, in other places in Asia. But in Italy, it's, it's rare, this, this, this kind of quality. So once again, congratulations. Fabio. Thank you so much, Guido. So proceeding with our questions, what, in your opinion, what is your greatest strength? Uh, I think there are several of them. It's not only one. Sure. Uh, as usual, the result is the sum of a lot of things and a lot of steps and a lot of details. So one strength is the uh, focus on every step and every detail in the process since the beginning to the end. For example, we have uh, customized uh, appliances with some you know, upgrades to have the proper result. Uh, we have custom cables uh, that are different depending on the application and different depending on the master that we have. And uh, we have ears that I suppose our ears are working well from this point of view. We have many different systems we work with and several different people. Uh, we are a group of uh, passionate audiophiles uh, listening and listening and listening. And as I said before, the, probably the most important strength is the passion and the time that we put inside every single step. For example, the Cantate Domino production took more than 100 hours of work and listening tests, um, tens and tens of times listening the same things with uh, different approaches to have uh, you know the comparison of the results and then uh, as i said we take care of every single step this is also me is meaning to choose carefully for example the cutting engineer that is uh, able to follow our requirements and not to do what he wants but what we want and uh, to check and check and check. And this is again, a high cost approach because for every single title, we do minimum two uh, pre-cuts that we listen. Um, for the incoming uh, Cantate Domino and Jesse the Pawn Shop uh, box sets, uh, now uh, we are counting at least three mothers, <laughs> mother versions for each single side. That, that's terrible. It's, uh, you know, I'm getting broke for that because it's a really high cost because every box set is six mothers. 
So we take care of every single step. We choose carefully uh, the pressing plant, uh, both for the vinyl and the CD. And that's why the CD is done in Japan, where the process is under control since they are, they are disk. I don't send files through internet. Also for the CD to Japan, I send the hard disk itself. Fantastic. Physical Great delivery. decision. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> and, and I know well how they use their disk in the process so they don't transfer uh, into another uh, hard disk or something like that. They use my own hard disk to, to take out the file for the process. So we, we take control of every single step as much as we can. This is another strength. Uh, so we want the things done in that way or we change the, the supplier. This is the way, this is the reason. Perfect. So obviously who is interested is going to find a link here below in the video description to explore uh, the, the website um, of Audionautis. You're going to find all the different products and you're going to find also the reason why I decided apart from promoting this uh, this incredible label which i think really deserves more attention in the in the international market although we must say that audionautis is distributed by acoustic sounds in the us so you can find their products also there but apart from that the most interesting aspect is this incredible edition of jazz at the pawn shop so you're going to find a high price, but now you're understanding why there is this high price, even for a CD, because there is so much care behind it. It's truly outstanding because if you want high quality today, obviously, <laughs> Fabio explained you how many costs he has. Clearly, the final price can't be a street price of a normal CD made by a virgin or whatever. Okay, so let's jump in now and understand a little bit more uh, the production of a reel-to-reel -reel master tape copy, like the ones you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. L let's start from the origin. Um, sure. As I said in the beginning, we will we always ask for the original master tapes uh, or the original master file. You know, not not for the reel-to-reel -reel because we reel are full analog, no digital master in this case. That's my decision. I have fantastic titles on, on digital, but it's not logic to have a reel to reel of them. So we start from the original master tapes and what we ask all the labels we work with is to have the uh, oldest version of the master tapes. Uh, as you know, we, do, we use session tapes, most of the cases and not the master tapes. That's a different uh, because the session tapes are uh, really the tapes done during the recording, just cut and put together to create a reel. And for example, Cantate Domino and Jets at the Pawn Shop, the, the last two are done this way. So they are not master, they are session tapes. But what is the problem with the session tapes? They are the probably the, the best way we can choose. But on the other side, they are the most difficult tapes we can use because they have all the defects of the direct recordings. For example, if you take a look at the uh, picture that I published of the Cantate Domino mas uh, session tapes, there are a lot of notes, very different levels, track by track. AQ, EQ that is different and that to have to be done in a certain way. Uh, one channel was out of phase. There are a lot of problems this way. So it's clear that we cannot create any real master to sell to the people directly from the session tapes. The, se the session tape need a master. So we do our own master from those session tapes. This is another step that we do. And this is another choice since the beginning that is increasing the cost because we don't ask masters, we ask the session tapes. So what happens is simply that uh, we create the master from the session tapes. Um, in all, for all our reel-to-reel, -reel, we create minimum two masters that are identical and are done, both of them or all three or four, depend, depending on the title, directly from the session tapes, not copy of the copy. They are directly done from the session tapes. 
wow. track by track. And mm. so every single, uh, let's say, adjustment, let, let, let's call it this way, is done track by track. So we play one track with our adjustment and we copy in, in, in another uh, tape. Then we stop, we change the adjustment and we do the second track. And this way, till the creation of the full master. And then we do it again for the second copy. And then we do it again for the third copy. This is the way wow. it works. And so uh, in the end, we have a minimum two masters for each title. Uh, we call them number one and number two. And we start from number one and we do the copies. So the reason why we number uh, it's not only because we need to have track of the buyer, because this is a copyright reason asked by the, the labels. They want uh -huh. the, you know, the name, the, 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 the address, the telephone number, the email of every single buyer hmm. to protect because they are top quality results. So they want to protect. But also the reason is uh, because uh, the number one is the first done from the master. The number two is the second done from the master and, and so on. When we see that the master number one is starting the drop of the performance before it's too late, we throw it away and we start with the second copy. And that's it. This is how it is done. And the copy are done one by one and not as everyone else is doing one into three or four or five. So we have just one Otari reader and one Otari recorder, same models. One is reading, one meter cable, and one is copying in, into, the, into the tape, one by one. Wow. And we have always uh, listening to the result. It's a little boring <laughs> to copy <laughs> tens and tens of the same I bet, I bet. reels. It's a little boring, but uh, this way we can assure that the, the copy has no defects. And we, we listen to every copy in real time because we listen to the, the recorded one. And then when it's done, uh, it is packaged uh, into a high quality package that this is another choice because when you pay a lot of money for the result, in the end, also the package is important as much as possible. This is not a cheap edition eh, from this point of view. This is more or less the secret behind the real to real production. Yeah, I was blown away even from the from the boxes. I mean, you, you sent me a few pictures where they are handmade and they look perfect. They're just very, very high quality. They are handmade. So uh, <clears throat> if you take a look at 20 of them, you see that there are 20 little differences between them because they are That's handmade. That's the beauty. <laughs> yeah, this is a value added in my opinion. And it takes more or less uh, about one hour to do one single box. So it's two hours for just the pawn shop because it has two boxes. It takes one hour because it's handmade and also the painting, it's a painting, it's not a digital printing. So the painting, uh, I have a video showing the painting and the painting is very, very time wow. consuming. So that's why it's so, so, so different. Eh? It, it, it looks so different. Yeah, th these are just the little details that make you understand the the care behind the production of this of this type of of edition. Because not yeah. all editions are like this. Actually, in fact, I, I want to do a. I will presenting a video where I bought a, a, another um, master tape from from Sony, and the results were quite quite strange. But we'll we'll get to that in another video. Turning back to Jets at the pawn shop. Yes. Uh, something we were discussing, which shocked me, because the fact that you're using session tapes is just blew me away, is that we are also having a better master, because usually master tapes, the famous master tapes that everyone wants, are meant for vinyl. And so there are some limitations when the engineers were making those masters. So you're doing a new master without those limitations, right? It's correct. Not only that, we do. We do two masters for the reel to reel, and the master for the vinyl is different. It's another tape. Separate. That yeah. is done in a different way. Yeah, separate. We don't use those masters to cut the vinyl. Yeah. What I sent uh, Scott Hull in New York is a different tape because the, the process is different and the impact 
on the process of the process into the, the result is different. So we have full control of the real to real result. So we can do a, a master done in a certain way for our process and not for another one. But when you cut the vinyl, uh, the, the lathe is impacting into the process in a certain way. And then the, the lacquer is impacting and then the three step or one step process is impacting and the quality of the vinyl is impacting. So in the end, we need to take care of all the steps, as I said, all of them. So the master we create is uh, done in a certain way. And Scott is doing the rest to get the result that we want because he is asking a master done in a certain way to have full control on it through his, his own process. So for, for example, he cannot cut anything good from the session tape. No chance. Yeah. No chance, but they are different. So they, they sound in a different way. Of course, of course. Great. Um, yes. Um, something else that, um, uh, <laughs> may struck somebody is uh, you mentioned that you use the otari machines yes but you you told me that you have also the all the famous studer machines it's not a limitation because unfortunately uh, people have bias if they don't hear studer eight eight hundred twenty it's not the best of the best no it's you you customize these these recorders right why did you choose the otari we tried them all and uh, we had them all in the studio. Uh, I had my own Nagra. Um, the studio has still has the 820, the 812, the 807, uh, all, all of them. Uh, so we tested them all. And uh, in the first uh, productions, in the first years of, um, of the label, we used the 820. Because, because of the bias, <laughs> because of the of course the availability and uh, it was also easy uh, to have access to the a20 also two or three of them this was not a big issue but after a while uh, we tested the, the otari for a certain amount of reasons and we discovered that the otari is much more neutral than the a20 so i can tell you that probably for home maybe the a20 is a good choice uh but for a studio and for a copy real to real master creation the otari is much more neutral the otari was probably the uh, the latest real to real done in the world late 90s so it's full of controls you can do a lot of things directly on the otari without an external eq or an external things everything can be done inside and this is another big advantage in studio because you preserve the pathway of the signal much more than with an A20. Good so point. the Otari is allowing us a lot of things. And honestly speaking, uh, it has a real flat 20, 20,000 frequency resp uh, response that we like a lot. Uh, it's not as cold as the Nagra T, that is another fantastic machine, but the Nagra T is very cold in the sound. It's not that cold but it's not as warm as the A20, adding a little, you know, analog sound inside that the Otari is not doing. This is another, I don't know if strength or secret, but this is another step that we took and we decided. And now we have, uh, I think, four Otari. Which model? Uh, yeah. Sorry? Which models are there? Uh, all, all the Otari we are using are the latest one that is the MTR15, all of them. All other Otari are not as good as, as the 15, uh, and only the 15. When I mean Otari, I mean MTR15. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, so the next question was on the LPs and CDs, although you did already tell us a little bit, but you want to expand on that? Yeah. Tell us a little more, please. Yes, uh, let's start from the CD. Okay. Um, when we decided to, to produce some CDs, it was with Vivaldi for Season for Divox. And at that time, the, the best process we, we knew about was in the US and was with the gold CD. And honestly speaking, the result was surprisingly good. 
and I like that sound of that gold CD. But a few years later, uh, I met uh, what became later on my distributor for China, Hong Kong and uh, Asia. And he was representing Memory Tech, uh, a brand in Japan, offering another way of doing CD that is called uh, high, Ultimate High Quality CD. That is a different process. Uh, the plastic, the poly something in this case is liquid. And then with ultraviolet uh, bomb, bomb inside there, it, it becomes solid. And this way, all the steps for one and zeros are without any defect. And a long, a long ago, Danon was doing a, a sampler hmm. with one CD done in a standard way and one CD done in this way with the same file, original file and track. And it was very interesting because the sound was completely different. And the sound was so richer, deeper and more analog that was in, I was impressed. And I decided to, to go that way. Uh, the CDs done in that way cost uh, from five to 10 times a normal CD in the production. And it's far away. It's not, uh, you know, across the road. It's on the other side of the planet. <clears throat> so you can imagine the cost of the transport, uh, the customs, the fees. But the result is stunning. So no chance. I was no doubt. I had no doubt. I have no doubt today. And this is the way we produce the, the ultimate high quality CDs. And as I said, I sent them the hard disk drive and not a file since the beginning. And I continue to go this way. Uh, on the other side, also the package is, is done uh, in a very special place uh, that is in Hong Kong, uh, that is uh, very carefully followed by the owner. So it's not the classical Chinese maker and, and, and so on, but it's, it's very well done, super high quality. Um, and also this way, the, the high quality is the real reason why we go, we go there. The high quality of the result and the care that they put inside at each single production. I have control of the pathway there because uh, it is connected also to my distributor directly. So that's why we have that kind of supplier. Regarding vinyl, uh, the story is a bit uh, more complicated because we started with Palace many years ago. And we have been satisfied with the high quality of Palace uh, vinyls uh, for a few years. Hmm. And then uh, we notice a drop in quality. It is very sad to say. But the quality of the gatefold dropped, the quality of the vinyl dropped, uh, not, in, not in terms of silence or noise of the vinyl, but in terms of flatness of the, of the vinyl. And as I said, quality of the gatefold printing. And so we decided to move uh, to another supplier and we tested Optimal. Hmm. And uh, now we are currently using Optimal, but we are testing uh, a couple of other suppliers that are smaller, but Optimal is really uh, doing a fantastic job. Um, also, in this case, we want to take care of the process. Um, so we we really have a very good interface with the supplier because we want to follow every single step. And so, so it, it, it's, it is hard um, to follow the, the numbering sequence because no big uh, producer is uh, in any case uh, warranting you <laughs> about the, the sequence. Yes. So the number one is never the one and the 1000 is never the 1000. But we are trying to, to arrange with them uh, at least uh, something that is uh, assuring me that the number one is not in reality the 1000. Maybe it's a 50 that is making no difference at all. Okay. And this is another step that we want to take care of. But the most difficult aspect now is to creating the mothers. It's not creating the right cut of the lacquer, but creating the, the mothers. And uh, in the last 12 months, we had a lot of issues in the mother creation. Uh, always a lot of uh, uh, 
holes, pops, uh, distortions in the creation of the stampers. I don't know what 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 is coming from. Um, I don't know the root cause of that. Really, no clue. Uh, we suspect is the dropping in quality of the metal, of the nickel uh, mm. metal part uh, yes. due to the war, probably, and so the quality of the supplying of the metal part. Huh. But really, this is increasing a lot our cost because, as I said, the. The boxes that we are doing with three vinyls inside needed two generations of mothers and also the second generation has half of the mothers not as good as we want. They have defects and the defects are not acceptable. It's not a little pop somewhere. It's something much more impacting. Distortion. So that, that's the vinyl. That's, it seems to be easy eh? to, to produce the vinyl, but as a... Uh, as Scott is always repeating, is the last 5% that is making all the difference. Of course. Everyone can reach the 95%, but the last five is what we focus about. Yeah, and besides the war, uh, even the, 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 I think there's a big problem because I, I talk about this in my, in my videos. There are too many orders and the pressing plants are the same number, more or less. Uh, yes. So. That's why maybe Palas dropped their quality. I mean, too probably many yes. orders. Uh, exactly. They, they work 24 hours a day, probably seven days a week. <sighs> and uh, now, if we are lucky, the delivery time is uh, five months from the approval of the mothers. <laughs> wow. From the approval of the mothers. It's a long time in 2023. It's a long time. Right? It's very difficult to have uh, such many and big investments for such a long time. Okay, let's reach our last question, even though we, did, we we already have an answer, probably. What is the main difficulty of your job? Uh, the main difficulty is, uh, I can tell you, the, five, five, the last 5%. That's what I thought. The last 5%. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's uh, requiring a couple of hours to find it. Sometimes, like in Cantate Domino, it requires tens and tens of hours. Ah, sometimes we are still struggling. <laughs> I have a title right now. Uh, we are working with, uh, since six months, we did uh, something like five acetates to test the sounds and all of them with different results, but none of them are feeling that 5%. Hmm. None of them. Uh, so it's very difficult, that 5%. And, and this is also due to the content, because probably many audiophiles uh, can't know or can't understand uh, that a lot of recordings are done because they are nice, they are great recordings, but they are not for vinyl. Mm. And uh, we cannot cut that kind of content in a groove, simply. We cannot. La Spagna is uh, a simple and very famous example of that. There are sometimes two instruments playing together. They are very far away in terms of frequency response and high energy. And the groove simply cannot, cannot be cut yes. to contain both, both of them in the correct way. And I remember how much Stan Riker was struggling. Uh, that was his last cut. And then he died, but he was uh, writing me every single night because he could not find the right way for cutting them. Wow. All the four, four sides. And he discovered that the original Teldec cut was done simply with, uh, with a filter in the bus. <laughs> simply, because this was uh, cutting it short, making it possible, but this is not the 5% that we look for. And now we have this title from Pierre Verani that is even more complicated because the content of the reverbs and the out of phase echoes mm. are very difficult to be cut with the music playing because they are in contrast and opposite in the, in the groove cutting. So it's very complicated to find the right way for making them, putting them inside the grooves without losing the most interesting aspect of the recording. It is exactly the 3D image and the echoes 
and the choir moving and running through the the church that's that's the difference uh so this is the most difficult aspect that is technical one and the second one is the uh, the control of the process as i said because uh, most of the time we fail the first chance the first trial is not working so we need to find another way to go on and sometimes it, it cannot work, work simply so we need to invent something and create something to make it working well thank you fabio fascinating i mean i could go on and on it's already ha more than half an hour that we're talking and there's so many things that i mean normal people obviously but also normal people but also audiophiles don't know i mean i some things you said because we we were we were chatting also in another video a few a few weeks ago and fabio told me a lot of stuff um, some a lot of things i didn't know about so it's 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 extremely fascinating maybe we'll do another interview in the future okay well, so thank you again thank you so much and bye bye Next, see you next time. Bye, bye, Ciao, Fabio. Thanks Thank a lot. you so much. Bye, bye. Ciao. Welcome back. As you can hear, the bells are surrounding us. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And now, finally, we can listen to a little extract, a few snippets from the master tape number one, the master tape copy number one of Jazz at the Pawn Shop. Are you ready for the experience? Once again, the files are also below here in the video description. Go! Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the listening, the experience. I hope you enjoyed the video. A little long video, I know, but there was lots of stuff here, I think, worthwhile to share with you. Please leave your comments here below on what you're thinking of doing, what you like more, and any other questions you, you want. I can turn them to Fabio. He is very available, very nice. And what else can I say? 
after all of this, remember that music is born analog. Bye. Ciao, belly. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.